Hey guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and it's time for a book chat. So this month I thought it would be kind of perfect timing to talk about beach reads. Heading into summer there are always tons of best beach reads lists that pop up everywhere. And I think a lot more people read in the summer because of that reason and because of the sort of beach reads thing and the idea of dual escapism. So not only are you escaping to the beach but you're also escaping with the book. And there's something that just, you know, works and I think calls to people. And it seems like the way to sort of make the most of your weekend relaxing time or your vacation time or whatever is to just you know grab a light fun book and thoroughly enjoy yourself and relax. Of course I think there are a lot of different definitions and if you look at any of those lists I mentioned you'll see some that are full of chiclet, you'll see some that are all thrillers and mystery, you'll see some that are classics and on and on and on. So everyone has their sort of different way of interpreting what's a good beach read. Because it is a case of escapism and trying to make the most of your relaxation time, you really should be just going for the things that works for you. For me, when I think of beach reads, I tend to think of certain criteria. Super quick, something that you can possibly read in one sitting, maybe while you're at the beach or you know, while you're sitting outside in your backyard. or It's something that's fairly light. Nothing very depressing, no tears. You don't want to be sitting on the beach reading this book and sobbing like a baby because everyone else on the beach is going to look at you like you're a crazy person. I want my characters to be likable. I want characters that are really going to draw me in and make the book hard to put down. Um, characters that you can relate to right away and that are really funny, have great personality. Because you want a sort of immediacy to a beach read. You don't want to have to work at it because there's going to be a lot of stuff sort of distracting you. You know, you're going to have the beautiful weather and kids playing on the beach and dogs running over your feet and seagulls swooping around and there's going to be enough trying to pull your focus away that if it's a book that you really have to work at, it's not necessarily going to work in that setting because you just have too much of a split focus. So you want that immediacy. You want those characters that it's just like, bam, I like this person. They're awesome. They're funny. They're spunky. And the last thing is that I want it to be a super refreshing read. I want it to be something that feels kind of energizing. Again, no tears, nothing that's going to pull you down. That's not to say that you can't have slightly serious beach reads. And of course, if that's what you're into, then you absolutely can. But for me, it can be serious, but if it's going to be, it needs to be a way that's cathartic. I don't want to leave the beach feeling depressed, <laughs> you know? The whole point is that it's something that's going to complement your outing. So you want something that's going to work on you the way the beach does, so something that's going to feel really light and refreshing and happy when you're done reading it. Or if not happy, then just kind of cleansed, I guess. Just kind of, ah, uh, that's what you want from a beach read if you're me. So those are the things that I look for, but there are also other things that kind of scream beach reads to me. So if it's set at a beach or an island or something like that, that, I mean, it seems a more immersive experience. You're at a beach reading about a beach, you know, so that kind of works. Rereads of faves or continuing with a series that you really like is a really great beach read because you know you'll, you're already in it. You already have connected to these characters and you can dive right in. For some reason, Middle Grade Adventure really works as a beach read for me too. I think because there does tend to be more of an immediacy with the characters and the plot. And for some reason, and I'm not sure why, um, Contemporary also always screams beach read to me. Maybe it's because I don't read a lot of Contemporary, so it is a little bit of a different escapism for me. But though I do still really love a good sci-fi or fantasy read for the beach, Contemporary I think tends to be the ones that I find myself going to as tried and true beach reads. And along with the middle grade, I think um, graphic novels. I'm not sure why I kind of lump the two together, but I think they hit the same notes and work in the same ways. So that's sort of my thinking on beach reads and my criteria. Using that criteria, in case you were looking for a beach read similar to what I would like, I'm going to show you stacks and stacks and stacks of books that I think would work as great beach reads, and some of them have been beach reads for me. And after that, I'm going to show you my beach reads pile for the summer. As I mentioned, the style and the characters are a huge draw when it comes to beach reads, and I want characters that are spunky and that I can gel with immediately. I've noticed that when it comes to things like that, the books I'd pick as beach reads are also books that I would pick as funk breakers, which makes sense because they sort of hit the same notes. Pretty much any book that I've ever mentioned as a funk breaker would be perfect for this, but here are some of the ones that come to mind immediately and sort of hit every point on my list. The Paranormalcy series by Kirsten White, I think perfect beach read. 
Anna and the French Kiss, of course. Contemporary, light, super engaging characters. Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins, which was one of my own recent backyard reads. And I'd say pretty much anything by Rachel Hawkins. She's got that sort of immediate, funny, engaging style. The Immortal Beloved series by Kate Tiernan. This is actually the third book, but it looks the most beachy and sunny. Again, super, super engaging characters. The Demon Trapper's Daughter series by Jana Oliver. This is actually book two. And again, really engaging characters, really fast-paced, unputdownable read. And then I have those books that still have some really engaging characters, but their big draw, I think, as a beach read is that they are super, super fast. They're light, easy reads that draw you in. They're easy one-sitting reads. So they really work for that sort of outdoors reading when you've got a lot of distractions. Like Spies and Prejudice by Talia Vance, Epic Fail by Claire Lezebnik, and Prom and Prejudice by Elizabeth Yuleberg. All three of these being contemporary retellings of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I think this is actually not a coincidence. I think that contemporary YA tellings of Jane Austen in general, but especially of Pride and Prejudice, are really well tailored to being summer reads because they all take the same approach and they all use this very classic well-known story, which again is good for making that immediate connection and diving in when you're doing a beach read. Also in that category are Babe in Boyland by Jody German and Tweetheart by Elizabeth Rudnick. And again, just about anything that's set at a beach, at the boardwalk, on a tropical island, I mean, that just screams beach read to me. Things like Clarity by Kim Harrington. This easily could have gone in the first stack of the engaging characters, but it is set at a sort of beach town boardwalk in Cape Cod, so I put it in the literal beach pile. The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. This is a no-brainer. Not only is it set at a beach, and it's a beach that this family goes to every summer, so it's a vacation read on top of that. It has the romance, it has a little bit of seriousness to give it heft, it's engaging, it's really quick. I mean, it's just right up at the top of the list of things that you would reach for when you're thinking beach read. Though I haven't read it, I pulled out Beauty Queens by Libba Bray because it's set on an island. Um, as you can see, it's an island that they crash-landed on. I've heard it's very funny and it's got a kind of weird quirky charm to it, so I think something like that makes it appealing as a beach read. I could see myself picking this as a beach read. The lipstick ammo <laughs> on top of a bikini helps, I think, give that impression, and I think it would certainly make other beachgoers curious what I was reading. And if you want more of a fantasy or sci-fi approach to your beach reads, but still something set at a beach and similar to those, Fathomless by Jackson Pierce, which is a mermaid story and again is set in a sort of tourist town on the boardwalk, or Zoretta Cordova's Vicious Deep series which is set on Coney Island as well as literally in the ocean with those super engaging characters and a really great style. So again, this one hits all of those notes. Or in a possible weird pick for me, Shadowlands by Kate Bryan. This being a weird pick because I was really, really torn on whether I liked it or not. I did and I didn't. I've talked about that before. But again, it's set at a sort of beach town. It's a very quick read. This is an easy one or two sitting type of read. It's got those thriller elements if you like things like that. In the kids sort of middle grade adventure category, there are tons. I mean, the list for that is endless. But the one that I pulled out that I personally could see myself just reading on a beach and ending up getting really sunburned because I wouldn't put it down is Savvy by Ingrid Law, which is awesome and it hits all of those notes without being a fluffy throwaway. And as I said, graphic novels, of course. Almost all of the ones that I've ever mentioned on the channel, like Anya's Ghost and Friends with Boys and Zeta the Space Girl, all of those would be great, but the two that I pulled out are Nothing Can Possibly Go Wrong by Prudence Shen and Faith Erin Hicks, which would be an awesome beach read, or one that's set at a beach, which would be Robot Dreams by Sarah Barone. This does sort of check one of my no-no boxes off, in that it is a little bit of a tearjerker, strangely. I mean, it made me, it's really, it's sort of, it's hard to explain, but it leaves you feeling just a little bit melancholic. It's very bittersweet. That being said, it still would be a really good beach read. It's almost completely wordless, so of course it's an easy one sitting read. It's really, really engaging. As I said, it's set at a beach, it's, and it's just excellent. So I'm 
think there's probably something in there for just about everyone. If you like to read classics at the beach, obviously I would recommend Jane Austen. I think she's a great beach read. Again, for those same things, she's got super engaging characters. Um, you can read ones that are set at the beach. Persuasion, of course, takes place at Lyme and parts of it, as well as Bath, so both are beach towns. Or you could read one of the sort of adaptations of her unfinished novel, Sanditon. There are a number of authors that have taken it upon themselves to finish it, and if you were going to read one of those, I would recommend the one that is written by Marie Dobbs. You also may find it listed under the name Anne Telescombe because she writes under both names, but for the book itself, it just says, and another lady. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, and it's pretty damn good. So lots in there for you guys to find your own beach reads. As for what I'm gonna read at the beach or in my backyard this summer, who knows? I have a number of books though that I pulled that will probably be the stack that I'm pulling from or that are calling to me the most as beach reads. Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins because I kind of can't believe that I haven't read it already. Demon Glass by Rachel Hawkins because I just finished Hex Hall and OMG. Assassin's Serendipity by Jennifer Ziegler. I've already read Epic Fail as a sort of summer Jane Austen beach reads. I'm thinking this one will be another Jane Austen beach reads. As well as The Trouble with Flirting which is also by Claire Lezebnik. I think those will sort of be my Austen and August beach reads for this year. Possibly Liar's Moon or Born Wicked. Liar's Moon because I'm sure I'll fall right into it. And again, it's one of those next in a series books. I think those work well for beach reads. Or Born Wicked just because it's kind of calling my name. Maybe Monstrous Beauty by Elizabeth Fama because again, set at a beach. Summer and Bird by Catherine Camel because it's sort of middle grade adventure. One of the characters' names is Summer. That just kind of points to beachy outdoor reading to me. Take a Bow by Elizabeth Uhlberg because again, I loved Prom and Prejudice and think that her style is really well suited. And lastly, Chopsticks by Jessica Anthony and Rodrigo Corral because look at that. If that doesn't say beach read, I don't know what does. And those are my potential beach reads. If you have any recommendations for me of what you think work perfectly and fit my criteria for beach read, definitely let me know in the comments. And of course, if you have your own stack of books that you want to read this summer or recommendations that you would share that fit your criteria for beach reads, feel free to leave them in the comments or do your own video and link it up as a video response. Of course, you could do a blog post or a Tumblr post or whatever it is that you do and link those up on the linky at thebookrat.com. That's all for this month's book chat. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great summer of reading, no matter where you do it. And until next time, happy reading!